Hello, this is Patrick with 1CNC West, and what we're going to do in this video is take a look at the manufacturing provided by 1CNC XR5. Now, if we take a look at the main menu located on the left-hand side of the screen, you can see here's all of our different machining operations. We have stock tool paths for two and a half axis machining. We have our three axis tool paths here for solids and surfaces, and we also have our four and five axis machining as well. Now, in this video, what we're going to do is take a look at the workflow within one CNC for manufacturing. So we're going to take a look at two and a half axis machining. Let's start with pocketing. So I'm going to grab the pocketing operation. I'm going to have one CNC pick everything on the screen. I'm going to have it scan for all the different pockets, and I'll click OK to that. Now this is where you define a tool. Now you can do this manually if you want, and as you type in different values, you can see that the graphics up there at the top change. So it's a lot of nice user feedback there. If you want to select a tool from the tool library, just select on Tool Changer or just click on the graphic. It's a very simple tool library. Here's your subcategory. We'll go with end mill. I'll grab a half inch high speed end mill and click OK to that. I'll say this is chart position number one. You can fill your speeds and feeds in, or if you want, come down here to stock material and select any material that you'd like. I'll go with aluminum and click accept, and there's the speeds and feeds calculated. Now the next menu, this is your clearance and your depth of cut. All those look great. Uh, this is really nice. I want to demonstrate something here. I'll type in minus 100 thousandths. Let's say I didn't know the depth of cut. If I click pick Z, I can come over and I can left click any one of those vertices and one CNC will extrapolate that depth for me and plug it right in there. So that's really nice. With one CNC you're provided with traditional pocking as well as high speed. There's no extra cost for the high speed that's included. These high speed machining operations are included with all of our mill packages. Let's go with high speed closed for this. I'm going to tell one CNC to machine each pocket to depth before moving on to the next pocket. This is how we enter. I'm going to select uh, our ramp helix at 45 degrees. There's your step over. Let's leave 10 thousandths on there. I'll click next. This is for an extra finish pass. I don't need one for this, but you could have an extra finish pass and you could apply cutter comp if you wanted. Let's hit finish and there we go. There's the tool path. Now, 1CNC also provides rest machining. So let me demonstrate that. We've already machined these pockets with a half inch end mill. I'm going to come over here and grab exactly the same operation. That looks good. But now let's use a quarter inch end mill. So I'll go to the library. Let's go to a quarter inch high speed. That looks good. That's going to be in turret position number two. Again, you can type your speeds and feeds in if you want. I'm going to let 1CNC calculate that. That looks good. And down here where it says rest machine, as soon as I click this, this will list all the previous machining operations. I want to take into account this previous mill pocketing. So I'll click next on that. And what's going to happen now is 1CNC is just going to machine what that last operation, or not the last, but this particular pocket operation left over. What's nice too is you're not restricted to two operations. You can have as many size, different size tools, as many different rest machining operations as you'd like. All right, let's take a look at profiling. Same thing, just come over here and grab your operation. Grab the geometry that you'd like to use. I'm going to climb cut there, so I selected the arrow for climb cutting. Same thing, you select whatever tool you'd like to use, or you can manually define a tool. I'm going to go with a 3 8 this time. Let's go with the 3 8 in mill, say that's turret position number two. We'll let 1CNC calculate the speeds and feeds for that. And you can always come back here if you want and overwrite things if you'd like. It's completely up to you. I'm going to say flood for coolant on that. Our depth of cut looks good. For profiling, you can cut by level or you can ramp profile if you'd like. Let's just go with cut levels here. I'm going to leave zero on the side and click next. We don't need an extra finish pass. Here's how we approach and exit the profile. It's all very graphical and you can pick whatever style you'd like. I'm going to go with the line arc command and say all this looks good and hit finish and there's our profile operation. Now as you accumulate operations they get stored within your NC manager. This is where you create your CNC code and you can easily reposition these, reorder them if you want just by taking your cursor and dragging them down. It's easy to edit the commands. You can just right click for example and select edit and then go back in and make whatever changes you'd like to make. All right, let's take a look at drilling some holes now. A couple of different ways to do that. The drill single, you can select these guys one at a time, or the hole wizard will scan the geometry. And what happens now is these are all the holes that, this, that the hole wizard found. I'm going to select those holes right there. And notice as you click one of these checkboxes, you get nice feedback. I'm going to go with those three holes right there. These are our clearance values. That looks good. And what's nice about the whole feature tool is that you can perform lots of different operations. You're not just stuck with one thing. So for example, we could drill, we could countersink, and maybe we want to tap. So you can accumulate lots of different items here. 
For this, all I'm going to do though is I'm just going to drill. So let's just select the drill option. I'm going to double click that. And same thing, you can pick a tool from the library if you want or you can define your own tool. I'm going to just select a tool from the library here. Let's go to the drill subcategory and we'll select a half inch drill there. That looks good. That's going to be turret position number three. And to kind of speed things along here, I think what I'll do is I'll just type in my own speeds and feeds for that. I'll say all that looks good. This is our depth of cut. I'm going to type in minus 400 thousandths for that. And then we can output can cycles or no can cycles. And there's also other machining we can perform on the holes as well. I'm going to go with the can cycle, which is a machine cycle. And for that, why don't we use a G83 PEC, and I'll use, how about a hundred thousandths for that. That looks good, so I'll hit finish. There's the confirmation. There's a nice cross-section of the hole that shows us what we've done. That looks good, so I'll hit finish. And there's the machining operation right there. Now, if we want to, there's a couple ways to uh, simulate and preview your toolpath. Let's demonstrate those. If I right-click up here and select preview, that's going to show the solid model, and it's going to show the tool interacting with that. While that's taking place, you can zoom in, zoom out you can rotate around. So that's called preview. If you'd like to watch material being removed, you can use the simulate command. All this looks good, so let's click OK to that. There's our stock, and then there's the simulation. I only took one depth of cut on that, but as we do that, we can rotate, we can slow this down, we can speed it up, whatever we'd like to do. So there's preview and simulate. And to create CNC code, let's wrap this video up. I'm just going to right hand click, and we're going to select post group. Here you can select whatever post processor you'd like. We never charge for post processors. There's over 100 that ship with one CNC. We'll make edits or create posts at no extra cost. We'll hit post process and hit save. And this is going to create the CNC code for us. And there we go. And then if you'd like, you can always come in here and use our RS-232 to upload and download if you'd like. And so that's it. Thank you so much for watching. And in the next video, we're going to take a look at 4-axis and 5-axis. Thanks so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.